What makes for a good golf swing? Is it how pretty it is? How smooth? How much power you generate? How functional? I see 12 gym bros a day and 14 people on the range trying to create a beautiful golf swing, trying to look like Rory. I also see 12 guys a day on the range hitting the ball like John Rahm, not really worried about how it looks, throwing lasers and darts at the pin. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Rory's swing. It's the epitome of smooth. It looks like the Iron Byron came to life. But here's the thing, we all don't get to have a swing like Rory. That is, unless you plan to hit, I don't know, 10,000 balls with every club. In this video, we're going to take a look at what makes both of these players so incredibly good. We're not going to dig into deep technicalities. We're going to look at a bunch of primary positions in the golf sequence that build consistency and repeatability first, and then power. I think the best way to show this is to compare John Rahm's swing to Rory's. Everybody knows John Rahm throws darts and bombs the ball, but everybody's watching Rory's swing on YouTube, sometimes more entertained by how it looks than how he scores. Don't get me wrong, these are two of the best ball strikers on tour, and if I was 20 years old, I'd probably try to be like Rory too. But some of us aren't Rory, some of us are John Rahm. But with all the hype and media, here's the thing no one's telling you. We can watch these swings side by side and see that they both go through the same sequence of events. I mean, it's dictated by their body types and their age and the type of swing they've chosen to make. But just by comparing these two right here, you might be thinking, wow, they're more similar than I thought. So let's take a look at John Rahm's swing first. See what makes him so consistent, so powerful. See, John Rahm's hands start in front of the club face, already in a press position. Basically, he's already in his strike position, his impact position, the end-all, be-all position for hitting the ball crisp and clean. Here we see Rory in a very similar position. Hands forward, pass the ball. It's the pressed impact position. We're going to talk about this a lot, but for now I'm going to move on. After Rahm's press position, he's going to move into that one-piece takeaway, straight away from the ball. You can tell because there's a shadow under his club head, and you can still see it. As you can see, his torso slightly rotates, and his club head stays in that squared position. Oddly enough, Rory's going to make that same move. A one-piece takeaway, starting with his torso, pulling his club straight away from the ball. Remember, these two club swings are supposed to be diametrically opposed. Both golfers have shifted their weight partially to the back foot. Essentially, at this point, they both attempted the same move in the same sequence. From here, Ram is going to move further into the swing sequence, into the down-the-line position can see that in this transition he's began to bow that lead hand and cup the rear. To assist in his turn, Ram has pushed that lead knee forward just a tad. Now the rear knee, being a little less mobile, hasn't moved as much as most golfers. Now Rory starts that same move to the down the line position. The only real difference here is that Rory doesn't do that bowed lead and cupped rear hand but Rory probably doesn't have that natural cast or over the top. Rory's lead leg does push forward a little more than Rom, and his right leg, his trail leg, pushes back just a tad more. Doing so, his turn has already gotten a little bigger than Rom's, and his arms are slightly inside the line, creating the feeling of a draw. Now Rom leans that left knee a little further in and finishes his turn. His turn is far shorter than Rory's, and it's obvious. He's going to sit a little earlier than Rory, too, because he's going to use more straight line acceleration and less twist and corkscrew like Rory. Rom combines parts of the sequence. His left knee coming forward, his right knee pushing back, and he starts to squat almost immediately. Because he's not turning as far, he doesn't have to have as much patience in the backswing as Rory does. Now we're going to see that Rory completes a far bigger turn than Rom. 
turning his back all the way towards the target. His left knee coming even further forward and his right knee pulling all the way back to open his hips. This is really the only difference in their swings. See, Rory has a corkscrew swing. He uses torsion release. While Rom uses more of a straight line swing. He leaves his hands at the furthest point from the ball and then uses a straight line acceleration, which is why he hits it so straight. See, Rom's hands. Initial move is straight towards the ball, instantly creating lag, pulled down by his lower body. Rory sits into this position also, but you'll notice that his hands aren't initially heading straight to the ball. They're actually moving away from the ball. He has to be far more patient because his swing is so much larger. This is one of the reasons that most amateurs should start with a smaller swing because patience takes patience to garner. And then from here, Rory pulls it down into the lag set position, which is this V. Just like Rom, and no point in this swing has the club head caught up to his hands. From here, Rom is going to force his hands down past the ball. His lead leg pulls back while his rear leg presses forward. You're going to notice this position is very common with all good ball strikers. From here, he can release the club head without worrying about it passing his hands before impact because his hands have already passed the ball. And as they were when he first set them, his lead hand is still bowed and his trail hand still cupped. Here we see Rory driving his swing with his lower body, front leg pulling back, rear leg pushing forward. His hands have now reached the ball, so he's free to release the club head because it cannot catch his hands until it struck the ball. Again, the magic of the press position. Now Rom moves to the impact position his hands clearly in front of his club head. His league leg has posted, meaning it stood him up straight and stopped moving forward. Even though his moves are not as dynamic as Rory's, the effect is the same, driving down and through the ball. Rom's lead bowed and rear cup still clearly visible as he uses what Bryson DeChambeau talks about by pushing the rear hand through with the palm. Now Rory's going to reach that impact position with his hands clearly in front of the ball, with the club head trailing, posting that left side of his body and standing up tall with his lead hip, preventing him from moving forward, allowing his follow through to be true and tall. We can work on our follow throughs, but our follow throughs are really a product of the rest of the sequence of the swing. For Rory, it's almost a conserving of energy. He simply let it go. Rom two is gonna make that impact position with his hands in front of the ball and then finish high, conserving energy, letting it go in the direction the club was already moving. So now we've looked at both swings. So now what? Well, now let's look at him again, now that we're a little more informed. See, for the most part, the sequences in all professional golfer swings are the same. The sequence positions, they vary a little, based on age, body type, all sorts of factors that they can't control. The thing is, the swing is beautiful, because it's functional. The swing isn't functional because it's beautiful. It's functional because it uses physics, straight lines, calculations to create something repeatable. I'm gonna end this by telling you something I've already told you before. You need to work on that press position. When you start and end with the impact position, some of the other sequences fall into line much easier. For example, Rom's lead bow hand, rear cup hand, I get requests for lessons for that all the time, and it's very difficult to accomplish, especially if someone doesn't start in a press position. If you start your hands in that bowed and cupped position at the beginning of your swing, it is far easier to accomplish it at the top, and then return it to the impact position. You see, YouTube has got us believing that we need to be beautiful to be great. I mean, some of us believe we have to be beautiful just to be good, and that's not really true in golf. I mean, yes, if you have a functional swing, there's going to be some beauty to it. You can guarantee that. But my suggestion is don't start with what preconceived beauty is. Find the sequence. Create your own beauty in your swing. I've done that, even with an ugly swing. And all I do is press and send.